Hi listeners, welcome to another episode of Wreckage, an RPG podcast. I'm Lee, and I play Tink Er Taylor, the Orion mechanoid with a penchant for fine clothes and high profits. If you've enjoyed listening to us, why not leave us a review? It really helps bring more listeners into the fold. Now without further ado, let's rejoin our heroes in the land of Uri. Uh, so, hello and welcome to episode number nine of Wreckage, an RPG podcast. Uh, I'm DM JGR, and here is the wonderful cast that, we, that we've got: uh, Jay, Lee, Adam, uh, Rob, hello. and Holly as well. Shalom. Um, so, uh, thank you, folks, for for coming along. I can't wait to get going on this and maybe unleash you once more into a cityscape. Uh, um, but anyway, we will we'll get going. Has anybody got anything they want to add before I say thank yous or intros and stuff? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, uh, good luck. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Ollie. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so uh, a couple of thank yous. First off, Green Ronin for uh, writing uh, such an awesome set of rules. And yeah, thank you very much to Sirenscape for providing a bit of music. And also, if you didn't know, you can also go and get RuneScape's music uh, online as well. They're sort of they've got it royalty free online, which is pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, so thank you to all of those people, and uh, we shall now, I think, embark once more on our quest. Well, see if we can find a train, maybe. <laughs> so here we go. Oh, oh, I almost forgot. We have an intro. Hang on, I'm going to try the intro. Here we go. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Let's go. Oh, oh great. Yeah. Come on, Adam, Adam, we need your intro while this intro is playing. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Even Lucky music? had a montage. A <laughs> montage. Even Rocky had a montage. Yeah. Montage. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a nineteen eighties newsman. <laughs> and what's what's wonderful about this is we've been back from the intro for oh. a good five seconds. <laughs> so. Uh... <laughs> Just in time for those amazing poses. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, that was good fun. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let's jump back into the world of Uri. So, uh, last time around, our group headed out from the monastery in the Misty Swamp and made their way to the grand city of Marquis. The larger city in the northern Orem coast and what some see as the northernmost bastion of civilization. Our group set about their tasks, Galen finding the Ember Order house, and Tink going for an upgrade, while Tan and Mac went looking for a drink and also a train. Unsuccessfully, I might add, but with some killer binoculars. And Gillis, the well... Binoculars. And the brushes, don't forget about the brushes. And the brushes, and the brushes. <laughs> I'd completely forgotten about the brushes. <laughs> One of a kind brush, I remember now. I haven't even and, put them on well, my character sheet. <laughs> and well Gillis he sat in the inn and had some alone time after a day in the city our group sat down for a well earned rest we rejoin them as the sun begins to rise and shine through the window once more an early morning frost and chill in the air as the fires begin to start stoke up and smoke starts to rise above the city once more further into the city in the clockwork district Tink is just being switched back on. Over to you. It's the clockwork quarter, John. But okay. Um, so he's going to come back online. I'm guessing he's led on a slab or something. Yep. Yeah, so he's currently on that sort of slab that's rather like the the metal sort of um, gurneys that you find in the the morgue. Um, so I guess he'll, you know, yeah. tools all around you. Yeah, I think he's going to slowly sort of sit upright, you know, bring himself upright, swing his legs off the side and look around. Is there anyone else in the room with him? 
Um, so as he has a little glance around, nobody else is in the room with him. The door to the sort of front of the upgrade uh, establishment is is wide open. Hmm. Curious. I think at this point he'll get up off the gurney and have a look around, see if he can find someone. Wander through the door. Okay, so as you, as you sort of get up and you sort of take a moment to steady yourself, it's a bit strange. You know, you've been switched off for a while, but uh, you know you feel a little bit limber, feel like got a little bit of lubrication in your joints and you sort of make your way out of the uh the area and you sort of poke your head round and you see just behind the bar just on the side there's nobody in the establishment apart from this one individual who just turns her head over towards you and says ah finally awake i see yes it was a pleasant offline period how are the joints oh, yes, feeling very, very limber have you, have you added more lubrication Indeed, I have. I wouldn't. I wouldn't allow somebody to sit on my table and not have a, a good lubrication uh, whilst they're being worked on. <laughs> yeah. Happy ending. I was gonna say, does uh, Tink, does Tink want to check he's still got both his kidneys? <laughs> <or stuff? laughs> yeah, it's, he's gonna feel for like stitches. <laughs> um, uh, well, from that, yes. Uh, to what do I owe the pleasure? How how much? How much gold do I owe you? And she sort of brings over and goes, well, for the upgrades that I've supplied you, um, I think we're looking at around about uh, 30 gold pieces. Um, however, I am willing to add it to the tab, and I am sure that you'll pay I me back I do believe I have some garments yes. for you, actually, which are more... Wonderful, wonderful. I was awaiting my next delivery of garments, and well, what have we got in store this dresses. time? They are very in this season. Oh, I shall indeed look forward to trying these on. I mean, if you could yes, get them delivered here, that, that would be wonderful. I return to my shop. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. No, uh, would I, you like I a drink I'm before very, you I'm go? Fine. Oh, it is such such a shame, but it was a pleasure working on you, and I will uh, see you in the morrow or Indeed. whenever Thank you next you, come and visit this fine establishment. It's no problem, Tink. Absolute pleasure as always. Um, and she sort of makes her way out from the bar and sort of pulls a pair of keys out of her sort of little, uh, little bag that's hanging over on her side, and she sort of unlocks the door, opens it up and sort of glides her hand yeah, towards the door, out, then, gesturing for you. As you as you make your way out, you sort of you sort of hear this little exhale of air as she shuts the door behind you, and sort of you can see her just walking off back towards the bar through the little gap in the in the door. And you make your way back out into the the clockwork. Um, uh, I quarter. guess I'll need to regroup with the um, others. Where would you like to go? Uh, was I aware of their last whereabouts? <clears throat> Yes, you were, you were, because you all split up from, from that point. So, uh, yes, you can make your way back there. It sort of takes you a little stroll, and, and it takes you about 20 minutes or so to stroll towards the inn. Um, so it's a cool morning. The smoke is starting to rise above the city, and you can sort of feel that in your olfactory senses uh, as you stride through. The, the hubbub of the city is starting to grow as people go around their early morning deliveries, and you see the odd cart come up from the docks with fresh fish uh, and, and shellfish as you sort of make your way back towards the gatehouse inn near the entrance of the city. Sort of around this time, the rest of you are starting to, to rise in your shared room um, at the top of the, the inn. Um, after what was it for you and the last few days and you've had a incredibly comfy night's sleep the beds aren't amazing they were sort of they're a mixture of straw and feathers and you know they're, they're, they're sort of not the, the most glorious beds you've ever stepped in but after stone mat floor and the, the wooden straw beds you had in Tosca this was one comfy night's sleep um, and you all start to, to wake up to the smell of fresh food being cooked below. <laughs> Over to you. <laughs> so yeah, Gillis is going to leap out of bed and go, what's this city all about then? Having not seen it before. 
<laughs> um, there are some good drinks not far from here. It's a bit early, man. But they have left my head hurting a little bit. You two it's, be quiet. <laughs> Trying to sleep. <laughs> It's at this time as well that you just hear this really pathetic <laughs> from over on the side. Oh my god, well. I forgot about Jeremy getting drunk! <laughs> and you sort of like look over and there's there's Jeremy, the, the, the small horns appearing out of his head and, and sort of like massive bags under his eyes and sort of like slightly bloodshot and he sort of opens his eyes and then shuts them again and sort of almost recedes a little bit further into his wool if he could. Uh, I, I will go over to Jeremy and, and, and comfort him uh, and say, It is all right, Jeremy. I know what will fix us. Let us go and get some breakfast and we will feel better. And uh, is anyone else coming for breakfast? Yeah, is, uh, <laughs> yeah I'm going to uh, throw the covers off me. And, uh, oh God. yeah, and you can assume he is pretty much <laughs> naked. Um, <laughs> and he's going to throw on his robes and come and join you as well. Old Tatan. -tat. So yeah, I think yeah, as well, we're Galen, we're... Galen, Galen will kind of like wake up and look at the state of these, these two that have been out on the, uh, on the city last night and just kind of agree with them and say, yeah, breakfast sounds great. You two look like you need it. Okay, so you sort of make your way downstairs and as you sort of walk out the room you get hit by an even heavier wave of cooked meats and sort of all freshly baked bread is sort of hitting your noses and you sort of make your way downstairs it's lovely cosy and warm the fire's already going on the side um, behind the bar there's um, a brunette she's there just moving around some plates and loading up some different meats onto them and she sort of looks at you and goes ah! Hello, hello. Uh, breakfast for, for five? Yes? Yeah, yes. Yes, 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 please. Good, good. And she sort of looks over and she sort of starts sorting them out. And says, oh, please, please take a seat. I'll, I'll be with you shortly. Amble over uh, and yeah. find a spot. Yeah, so there's a there's a real nice one just next to the fire, sort of a little wooden table, and you sort of take a seat. And within moments, she's coming across. She passes four large plates for you, and on, on these there's there's lovely meat, sausages, there's a little bit of bacon, and a, and a freshly pieced bit of bread. And she brings over in a smaller bowl, um, sort of a, a mixture of veg, and just puts it on the floor by the sheep and goes, "See, five, I counted." And she's, just, "Is there anything else you would like?" Eh. Uh. Could you, uh, have you got any eggs? Eggs? Ooh, I, I will go and double check to see if we've got any eggs. Could you, could you crack a raw egg into a pot with a bunch of black pepper and maybe some milk if you've got any? Put that in there as well. Oh, okay. Uh, she sort of like looks because, okay, fine. And she sort of walks off and uh, she goes goes to find find you some, find you an egg. I'm going to look at the rest <laughs> of the group and sort of go uh, Helps with the head and the stomach. <laughs> Yeah, yes, yes. Um, uh, Tan Tan, did you find the train yesterday? Uh, I, I can't, can't <laughs> quite remember. <laughs> uh, I know that we were drinking. I did get these though, and he's going to produce his as uh, very valued brushes, and he's like, this one is for hair, <laughs> and this one is for your back, and this one is for your beard. <laughs> you see? Ah. Gillis is, Gillis is going to ask, what's, what's a train? Uh, well, it, it, uh, well, we, we're not entirely too sure. It's for something for transporting people. We wanted to go find it, but uh, the streets here are very confusing. <laughs> yes. Gillis, try these. And I will show, shove my binoculars on his eyes. I got these yesterday. <laughs> they help you see things that are far away, but I still could not see the train. Even even though I had had my glasses. Okay, so Gillis puts the uh, binoculars on his face, tries to look at his breakfast. Um, obviously, it's going to be quite blurry. <laughs> he's going to look at Mac as if to say, like, yeah, Mac's obviously been done over here. This is some sort of junk that he's bought. I'm like, well, yeah, you're not going to see a train through them at all, are you, Mac? And hand them back. Totally unaware that these are things that are already far away. <laughs> but I... I... I didn't 
can find a train. We shall try. We will have to. We'll have to find Tink, and and then he can help us find the train. Yeah, Tink said he knew where it was, and then he left. But uh, we thought we'd try, but <laughs> we were very successful. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's eat up then. So, um, Gillis just dives into his breakfast and has absolutely no time for cutlery, manners, anything. Just firing it in his face. He's barely chewing. So, as you're as you're there, eating all of the food and sort of getting it down your, your gullets, it's around this time that Tink, you walk into the the room and you sort of open it up and you you see your your companions from the last few days there acquaintances, sorry, just sat there guzzling all of this food on, on this place and you sort of walk in. Yeah, he'll, he'll confidently stride over, he'll, you know, he'll survey the room like he does as an Orion, like very cold and calculating, and then he'll spy the others and he'll stride over, sort of twirling his cane, he's in quite a good mood. Greetings. Hello, Tink. How are we no, all just my food and just nod? <laughs> Gillis mutters something are... he can't understand as sausage rolls out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> how, how was your evening? It was okay. We found some good drinks, but we couldn't find the train. Ah, I got brushes. <laughs> mm, and he kind of, he kind of, you see his like lenses kind of whirring a bit as he kind of focuses on the brushes a bit closer. Mm. Yes, well, one of a kind. <laughs> re- really. <laughs> Yeah, you, can, you can't buy them anywhere else. I have the only ones. Well, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, I guess at this point we, we need to... Are we, are we going to find the train? Would, would you all like to find this train? Which I believe you were talking about. Yes. Did you want us to show us the place where we got the good drinks from first? Yes. In fact, I believe this may be useful. I can test out my new personality upgrade. Your what now? You don't need a new personality. Your old personality was well, great. Well, yes, I, I know this. However, it has come to my attention that out in the wider world, my particular form of communication is not always recognised or indeed understood. Therefore, I, I, I felt it pertinent to upgrade myself to be able to converse more fluently with the, uh, the lesser folk. I mean the common folk. And Gillis is pissing himself laughing at this point. So he gets it. He understands why you've done what you've done. And uh, as is laughing, just beans spit on putting down oh. his face. Does something amuse you, Crowman? <laughs> uh, no, no. T- uh, yeah, I think this is going to be good for you. Could you? And he, he kind of cocks his head, like he's not really sure. Who he I mean, uh, we're, 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 well, I'm definitely common. <laughs> folk. Why don't you try it out on me, Tink? Uh, I'm interested to see what they've, uh, they've done. Hmm. Very well. One second, and then kind of, kind of, he's been stood the whole time, and like, he sort of jerks his head back slightly. And then his whole kind of, like, posture kind of changes, and he just kind of hunches down a bit. Oh no. And he kind of leans in a bit close. He's like, <laughs> nah. Oh god. This is a bit more how do you say, common folk? Am I right? <laughs> We've got Del Bart in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cross between that and the uh, uh, and Moss's character from. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Did you see that Zoom like, across display last night? Display last night. I was trying to channel Billy Butcher, but clearly I'm not very good at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or like Grant Mitchell. Yeah, if you just say you <laughs> slag, it'll be right. <laughs> Plague. <laughs> Plague. Uh, uh, I figured a bit more of a common tongue needs a bit more of a common voice box. But what about uh, uh, the common cane you're carrying around? I mean, you've got to look at the part as well, well Tink. You need a disguise. Can't an upstanding member of society dress well? Not with that voice. Hmm. Uh, Perhaps you're right. Perhaps I need a disguise of some sort. I, I think it's a great voices. improvement. <laughs> you are so much more approachable now, Tink. I think we will get along very well. <laughs> yeah, 
it seems that it has been a success. Uh, very well. Being an orc of very high standing, I did not understand a single word you said, Tink, I'm afraid. <laughs> he kind of he kind of looks at He's gone too common. Back, and then he, he kind of he kind of stands back upright. Hmm. Perhaps I need a, an intermediate setting between the two for yourself, Mac. That was probably you probably need a higher one for me. <laughs> that is probably where you have gone wrong. You probably needed to go higher and then a lower one to talk to them. That is probably what was needed. But it is okay. I will try and I will try very hard to understand you when you talk to them. It is fine. <laughs> he just he just kinda looks at you like I mean if he could if he could display emotion he'd sort of be looking a little bit incredulous, like unbelievable. <laughs> Uh, if if you want us to wear a change of clothes, I think I have. I might have one up in my room if you fancy some old robes to try on. No, that won't be necessary. I shall return to the shop and fashion something slightly more acceptable. Oh, are we going to your shop first before we go to the train? I will be. Whether whether you wish to accompany me or not is. Oh, thank you. I would very much like to see your shop. Come on, everybody, eat up. Let's go and see Tink's shop. <laughs> and I think at this point Tink, Tink will kind of make that kind of 56k modem noise where he's just like inwardly swearing to himself <laughs> so are you going to make your way to Tink's shop first <laughs> very well follow me gentlemen <clears throat> Mac. okay and so... Jeremy <laughs> yes yes and Jeremy so um, Tink takes you uh, t more towards the, the central part of the city. Uh, for those of you who haven't yet made your way um, through here, um, it, it brings you through the, the, the central marketplace. Um, you, you see people starting to gather. You see sort of uh, shopkeepers starting to bring their produce to the market. Things aren't quite open up yet, um, but you can sort of get that sense that the market day is, is soon to start. Um, you see the odd exchange of fruit and veg and, and for, for local uh, businesses, but overall the other establishments haven't yet started up. As you sort of make your way through the central market, you're brought to this street, okay? And you see this big sign over the top of the street where it just says, Gilda Street, okay? Otherwise known as Golden Avenue. <clears throat> um, you sort of start to make your way up the cliffside and it's sort of on a slight incline up towards the larger fortifications um, on the sort of the, the coastal side of the city. Um, the, the, the trade here has not yet begun. There's nobody really on the streets. There's a few people um, going here and there. But what does strike you is this smell of pies um, just, just wafts down the street and you sort of see this sign outside the shop that sort of says soldier's pie and you sort of see Tink make his way towards the shop on the opposite side of the street um, you come to a small shop single story nestled between two larger buildings within the window there is some glorious attire very modern and very exquisite as you take in the finery you notice that smell of freshly baked pies again tantalising your nose and you sort of take a moment look around and as you glance back towards the shop door on Tink's shop you see a slightly faded note it just says coats missing, <laughs> gone to look for them back in a jiffy <laughs> and then below that there's a second note in a different handwriting that's also slightly faded it says still open he left me in charge, come on in and then there's a third note that's a little bit fresher, and it says, "In case it's not clear, we're open." All in capital letters. <laughs> Does the sign say "All in capital letters"? It's like a big no. sheet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I guess Tink will uh, go up and take the Four sign bag. off the door and then head in. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so he's take the sign off the door. You open the door, and the door creaks, and this little entry bell dings as you walk in. And as the ding happens, you sort of see this this oval face with big, wide eyes on the corners of the oval. It looks up from the front Have desk over the top and goes, Ah, ding! Hello! Greetings. I have returned. Ah, what good to see you, good to see you. you. Ah, oh, you brought friends! Ah, and you sort of see this uh, thing. It sort of, like, jumps, 
pops off its head to completely disappears. And there's sort of like this this small robotic sort of being just runs around the corner. Its head barely comes up to the top of the, the desk and, and looks at you all and goes, Ah, Dink, you bought acquaintances. Uh, hi, I am Trusty Fellow. People call me D. Who are you? We are not acquaintances. We are Tink's good friends. Oh, uh, friends. Mm. Yes, uh, good pr- friends. <laughs> I mean, practically family now. <laughs> <laughs> adventure friends. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh adventure friends. <laughs> so, uh, Tink, you you back for proper? No, I'm afraid I'm only here temporarily. Oh. And they sort of like as. I'm sorry, but you've been doing a fine job. I have! Do you want to see the books? Yes, I perhaps I should peruse them. Me, please come! And he sort of runs around, hops back up onto this box and sort of passes these books over to you. And for everybody watching this scenario, you see how... And you, you've you experienced this. You know how Tink explains every extrinsic detail of what's going on. You, you see at this moment... Uh, trusty fellow is doing the exact same thing and is telling Tink about every single purchase that's been made and they're just like both like zipping through this book in excruciating detail as you're all just sort of stood in the shop all right whilst they're doing that uh, mac is going to have a look about and see if there's anything that fits him Okay, so as you sort of have a little look around at the shop, um, the only things that you see on show at the moment are these exquisite dresses in the in the front of the the, the, the sort of the, the mannequins on the on the window side, um, and you sort of look around there, and you do see there's some rather fine waistcoats um, just hung up on a little rung just to the side as well. Um, perhaps a waistcoat would okay. fit Jeremy. <laughs> I don't think a waistcoat is really Mac. Okay. But... So as you sort of like you move over and there, there's a few. Is it made of wool, fit Jeremy? Right, Mac is just gonna happily just experiment. Okay, whilst so Tink is otherwise occupied. So whilst Tink and or any of the dresses <laughs> made of crow feathers. Uh, no, sadly, none of them are made of crow feathers. <laughs> any? So get as tosses as he Any other type of feather feather boa attire there? There's a few hats that have got feathers. Seagulls. In. Ooh. There you go. Ooh. Oh, my headdress is my, uh, my connection to the mighty oh, So, a little bit of time passes, and then finally... The, the cloak is so optional. It probably takes about a good 10, 15 minutes or so of you sort of all sort of stood in this shop, um, and Tink and, and, and Trusty finally finish uh, going through the book. I think at this uh, point, what would you folks like to do? going to fashion a garment uh, that looks a bit more common, uh, potentially one that is who either keeps it on him or he's just going to dress in it. Okay. It'll just look a bit. You know, it'll still be a suit and a bowler hat, but it might be like you know there'll be a ringer and it will look dusty and dirty. He's gonna like properly disguise it up, as it were, to look a bit more unassuming. Okay. okay so uh, yeah. So um, I would like you to make a crafting check, please. First roll of the night. Really that. <laughs> uh, a crafting is oh, uh, dexterity. That, so. Or is it intelligence? Hang on. It's intelligence, sorry. Eleven. Okay, it's not too bad. You've you've fashioned something pretty decent. Um, For those of you on looking, you sort of see Tink take up this suit from the side that's sort of been out in the back for a little bit, and he sort of puts a few tears in it, and you then see him sort of throw it on the floor, tread on it a bit, and sort of like run it around on the floor, and then he sort of picks it up and puts it on. And he sort of then gets a, a top hat, and he does that wonderful thing where he punches through it, uh, makes the, the top slightly uh, ajar as well, um, sort of puts it on, and, and here he is in his slightly more common attire. Uh, um, you look good. <laughs> I was going to ask you to make me some clothes, but perhaps there is someone else we can find <laughs> nearby. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I can fashion you something. What would you? It, it, it is okay. Um, no, your clothes look really good, Tink. <laughs> um, Very kind of okay. you. Okay. Mac is just going to wander off and just 
play with Jeremy. Okay. <laughs> sort of put the waistcoats back onto the thing and you sort of just have a bit of play, play, play with Jeremy. Um, so, uh, what would you folks like to do? It's sort of early morning, it's sort of starting to get in. You can sort of see that, you know, the time that you spent in the in the uh, shop, It's things are getting a little bit busier. Uh, what would you like to do? Can we just... Uh, um, there... Can we just regroup on what we need to do in, in our key? Because I think there's a few things that I I know that we haven't tied up. So one was the, the brooch that I think Mac still got. Do you still have the brooch, Rob? Uh, Mac proudly <laughs> displays his brooch that he is wearing. So I do have the brooch. So I, I think Are you still we wearing your crown? I am. <laughs> I think we needed to go see some chap about this brooch um, in a pub. Um, but I can't remember the name of the pub or the or the establishment that that we need to go visit. Oh well, <laughs> let's just go see the train then. <laughs> we do need to see the train uh, and, and John as well. I wanted to check in with the the blacksmith, I believe. Um, yes. Uh, but I can't remember her name. <laughs> it's clearly been a very long long night. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> Two things. So um, at this moment, uh, as you sort of get the brooch out, you do know there was also a note with the brooch that told you um, sort of where that needed to go. <laughs> um, so that was the sword and shield mercenary contract oh, where you had that. Um, as it was assigned to a Mr. Smith there. Um, also, uh, the uh, blacksmith is uh, Francis's uh, blacksmith. Um, and um, she is in fact on the Golden Avenue as well um, and did we also know that we needed to go to the um, building to check out the staff we're looking for a dwarf right you were you were gonna uh, the place that you could go to get some information on that is the uh, archaeological society which you checked out the previous night but it was shut and the final one is to go visit the train because Mac Fantastic. needs to see the train and and Dolly. Uh, and Tantan. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It, that's that's the most important one, arguably. It's literally three letters. We forgot everything. Forget <laughs> <laughs> I've, had a, I've had a few drinks, all right? But just... <laughs> In character or out of character? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Galen's still together. struggling from the hangover. Of yeah, he didn't, he didn't go to the bars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I didn't do anything. I didn't actually get drunk. Um, no, <laughs> you went to an old man and gave him money. So I guess whilst we're on the Golden Avenue, it'd be good if I can, if Galen can go to this um, this blacksmith to go see Francis. Um, so I, I guess I'll let the group know that um, I need to check in with a blacksmith on Golden Avenue. Can we head over there next before we head to the train? I mean, I think Tink would probably stay at the shop for a bit and brief um, trust the guy okay. on things. So. Yeah, so... Yeah, so um, wander off for, for a bit. Yeah, so uh, you sort of make your way to uh, Francis's Forge, okay? Um, and you sort of make your way in and you sort of see this, this really fine establishment that sort of... At the front, it's a it's a beautifully stone fronted shop. Um, you do notice that everything here is made out of stone rather than wood, um, clearly because in the centre of this establishment there is this forge just burning away. Um, and out the front of this forge, there's an anvil, and working on the anvil, there's this large, strongly built woman um, with large biceps that sort of put you a little bit to shame, Galen. Um, she is undoubtedly known as the finest smith in Marquis. She has long brown hair held in a ponytail at the back. Her face is kind and as she looks up you see her sort of blue eyes walk over. There is also a smaller girl at the back in slightly ragged clothing just running around moving things about. She's got dark brown skin and eyes to match. And you sort of look over her and she's wearing her hair in the same way as Fran. It's just a little bit messier. This woman looks over and goes, Hey, how can I help? So, um, yeah, Galen will walk up to her. Sorry, you're going to have to... What was the name of the chap that I met in? (laughs) Everything has kind of gone black. What was the name of the chap that I met in the um, Ember Order room? Uh, Sir Ulrich Fireblaze. That what a memorable it. name. Ulrich, Ulrich so Tony Pounds. Yeah. <laughs> His name's Steve. No, I did actually write all this down. I can't find my notes anywhere. I need to start. Oh, oh, no. 
Um, <laughs> so this is what happens when I write down. Things. I shouldn't keep paper. Those <laughs> um, so I uh, walk up to I'm assuming who who is Francis and say Francis. Um, I I was speaking to Ulrich earlier uh, well, yesterday and. He said, this is the place I need to go in order to acquire some better armour. Indeed, you're in the finest smithy in the whole of Marquis. Um, what kind of armour are you after? I'm after some plate armour that bears the sigil Nerd. of the Ember Order. Oh, so a little bit of plate with a little bit of design on the side. Mm, okay, well, let's uh, so look. You after uh, light plate or heavy plate? Uh, light plate, please. Okay, very well. Um, she sort of like takes a little look and she's got some sort of stock over on the side and you sort of see her eyeing you up and down and looks over to her stock and goes, I think I've got a couple of pieces that'll be uh, roughly your size. It'll take me a, a couple of days to, to smithy it for you and certainly if you want uh, to have the sigil put on, that too will, will be an added cost. Um, you're looking at uh, 125 silver pieces. Ah, oh, fantastic. I believe that uh, Sir Ulrich said that uh, the Order will pick this up. Uh, did he now? I have never collected an, uh, an Order from uh, the Ember Order before. Um, there would still need to be a down payment. I don't just do things for free. Um, I would be able to take a 50% down payment of 75 silver pieces. Um, so, I guess... Um, so Gaylord doesn't have that much money anymore, <laughs> so, um, and he's probably uh, a bit confused as he thought that like he'd be able to source this through the Ember Order. So I guess he's going to try and um, convince uh, Francis that um, she can do this with a thirty silver piece down. <laughs> and she sort of looks at you and goes, "Roll, roll, <laughs> roll a persuasion communication check." Oh Jesus. <laughs> So normally we just palm things off on Gillis to buy them. Fifteen. <laughs> Gillis will pick How up. How much? Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, it sort of looks in as thirty silver pieces, with no other evidence of down payment. I am afraid I cannot take such an offer. Um, she says, "Look, well, this this is worth a hundred and fifty." gold pieces. I was giving you the discount uh, for having Sir Ulrich's I word, um, but I, I cannot work for, for free. I'm afraid. Don't worry, I'll put some money in too. <laughs> Guess what I'll wander up there. and I'll pull out of my rat-eaten purse ten copper pieces and put them on the table. <laughs> there we go. <coughs> don't, Look, don't worry about it. What, I tell you what, it would take me a couple of days to make it. I... Your build is rather, how can I say? And she sort of looks at you and smirks and says, average. I will make you some armor for your fittings. And then what I shall do is I shall leave it here for you to come and collect in a few days. How does that sound? And then if you can't buy it, I'm sure that I will find somebody who can. Very well. That seems like a good enough deal. And um, I think I should need to go and pay a visit to... Good old friend Ulrich in the okay. time. Hold on one moment before you disappear. And she sort of like comes across uh, and she sort of beckons to the, the small girl who runs across to you with a, a measure and just sort of so sort of looks at you up and down and sort of starts measuring you and then sort of uncomfortably puts her hand up into into Ooh. your groin and sort of smashes, <laughs> smashes you out of the side Call and sort of just and she's oh, my, very matter. <laughs> very very purposeful and sort of goes, got them all and she sort of runs over to this sort of bit of paper and you can sort of see her how oh, can I tell you the numbers again she goes yes and she sort of goes over and you sort of see them talk to one another as Francis writes these numbers into her book she says uh, very well you may go your armour will be ready in uh, in three days time I've got a few horseshoes to work on first Galen just hears under their breath Codpiece small. <laughs> <laughs> On the sizing, then it won't fit. Um, anyway, very well. Let's uh, let's head off. He's extra small. So <laughs> make, your way, make your way out towards uh, towards us. Uh, where would you uh, folks like to um, go? I repurpose that thimble. 
<laughs> and I'm assuming you head back to Tink's shop to collect Tink. Uh, yeah, yeah, Tink will kind of meet them part way. So what he's done is he's folded up his original suit and he's now... So he's wearing the kind of disguise, but he's kind of wearing like a, a bit of a poncho to kind of cover it up because obviously he's quite a well-to-do, high-standing member of society in, in Marquis, so he doesn't want to look obviously dishevelled because he'll obviously bring the, the reputation of the sword down. So he's, he's kind of covering most of it in like a, a cloak poncho type thing so so does it, is his personality thing sort of changes sort of his gait as well yes yeah he doesn't he, he'll cool. sort of hunch over and you know he'll, he'll be a bit sort of Essex neck yeah like a, yeah exactly an emu right son yeah. right yeah <laughs> like so, whiplash <laughs> so cock me it hurts <laughs> yeah yeah it does it changes his whole neck. it's still him it's just it, it's whole it's a personality kind of core as it were that just Overrides his etiquette and command and control nodes as well. <laughs> Safety features. <laughs> yeah. It is still him. Like, what, it's what not, it's as, not as, like a split as... now. It is literally just him putting on a voice in a right. affecting manner. As, as we walk out the um, the blacksmith shop, I think um, Galen say, "Okay, so that's me sorted for now." Um, but we should really probably check out this um, sword and shield establishment and see what needs to be done about this brooch um, and this note that we received and maybe even give Tink an opportunity to try out his new um, voice protocols yes it would be most sensible to do that while we are here rather than any find your bloody <laughs> brooch <laughs> oh I've got the brooch <laughs> oh, oh if we must then we see the train then we yes. see the train map. Yes, from the train. The train. We'll see the train. All right, let's go and see the person about my brooch. Okay. So you sort of make your way um, <coughs> down towards uh, the Sword and Shield Guild. Uh, you've walked past it a couple of times already on the way to the Central Market. Um, you recognise this uh, sigil outside, hanging this uh, this building. It's one that a few of you have worked for in the past and sort of have been to its various establishments. In fact, for some of you, this is not the first time you've been here. It hangs outside this stone building, standing out from its wooden neighbours. It's like a miniature fort on the corner of the street. You see a guard at the door, wearing no recognisable insignia. He's a mercenary, no doubt. A mix of leather and chain armour, with a sword and pistol hanging off his hips. He's got a strong black beard and scraggy hair and an eye patch over his left eye. And as you approach, he sort of looks over, just nods and just sort of scans you through. Sort of opens the door to the side and beckons you in. Yeah, so lead, somebody lead the way. Tink, yeah, tink, tink, we're all going in. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, Mac's going to go in first. And he's going to turn to uh, Gillis and say, <coughs> um, You know, when a king normally enters somewhere, there usually is someone who goes in first and blows on a trumpet and says, Ha ha, here is the king. Perhaps someone should do that now. <laughs> uh, I could do it if you'd like, Mac. <laughs> um, okay, go on then. <laughs> okay, you wait here, and he like scampers off like an excited little child. Um, uh, is there like are they quite heavy double doors, or is it just like a little single? Door? It's just a, it's just an open door, single door into this into this uh, room. Uh, I'm when gonna you... I'm gonna pick up one of my uh, hairbrushes and uh, hold it in front of me, and I'll br bust in through the door and be like, uh, I'm now presenting uh, King Mac. Uh, and his and his friends, uh, in, including me, uh, an adventuring party. Yes, and then I'm gonna like lean out the door and be like, "You can come in now. <laughs> come in, come in, come in." Mac is gonna stride okay. majestically into the middle of the room. So as you majestically stride into the middle of the room, you sort of see that inside there's some tables and chairs laid out. There's neat whitewashed walls with wooden beams exposed. The outer wall of brick is just merely for show. Around the room, there's various objects hung on the wall. Shields with ornate heraldry, a few swords, and even the most badass spiky mace you've ever seen in your life. The place is currently empty of people. 
all except one grey-haired man sat behind a desk who didn't even blink when you walked in. He's got his quill in hand and he's making notes on a piece of paper. <laughs> hmm. Tan Tan, I do not think you did that right. Is that not I think very everyone good? is meant to cheer when I come in, <laughs> oh, when you do it right. Do you want me to go in and like tell them to cheer? No, it is okay. Let's just get something to drink. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Don't worry. It is okay. You are only learning. Oh, Mac, a sense of disappointment Gentlemen. in your voice. <laughs> Do you expect a bigger fanfare? <laughs> Why don't you all find a table and I shall order the drinks? I think it's time I tested my new personality call. Oh, I'm not going to find a table. I'll come with you two because I need to see this. <laughs> yeah, we'll find, Tink, we'll find a table. Um, and I guess, like, Galen makes sure that Tink takes the note with him, at least, that we've got with the brooch. You might need this. Very well. Is this actually a bar? It's not a bar, is it? Yeah, we just assumed here. <laughs> we, had to we just assumed that we were going to get drinks. Carry, I was like, carry on, carry on with where you're going with this. Go on. I'm pretty sure it's just a mercenary place. Well, we're not going to tell Tink that. Okay, fine. <laughs> so Tink takes the brush and he kind of he, he stiffens up and then he kind of hunches over into his kind of slightly more common kind of. Well, not not the brooch. The brooch is still on Mac. We just you got the note that says we need to go return the brooch. Okay, all right, fine. So I've just got the note then. We have, we have discussed with taking the... the so he's going to kind of... Yet. Not strut, but he's going to kind of walk fairly confidently over. He, 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 yeah, swagger. That's, that's swagger. what I was looking for. Okay. Is he carrying some carpets under his arms? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, he swaggers over, and as you swagger over, <laughs> man's like, just there, writing in his So book. Tink's just going to get the note and just like pop it on the table, turn it around to orient it towards the guy and just slide it towards him. And he's there writing, he, he takes a look up at it, and he sort of puts his glasses onto the end of his nose and he looks up at you and goes, and do well, you have it? I think if you uh, take a look at Mark and Petra over there, you see it's uh, pinned to his lapel. God, they'll really let anybody be a mercenary these days. And sort of puts his glasses back on and sort of looks over towards the side and goes, oh. back in really, my Are you going to take that thing? Uh, back in my day. <coughs> and he's just, this uh, man looks at you. What do you man. want, Tink? Uh, uh, I believe this man needs to take a look at your brooch. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, is that a euphen... Euphen... Is that a... Is that a rude word you just said, Tink? No, no, no Mac. No, just... Just look at it, right? Okay, and Mac undoes his belt. <laughs> no, no, no Mac, this, this man's the, there the with his glasses on going... The thing on your chest, mate. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes. Oh, we got this in a, in a. It was it was an in an in a church, and there were lots of wolves that were very weird that looked like bears. And he picks up the bit of paper, looks at it, and goes, oh, "There was an illustration with this. I wonder if I got the old description." So he just looks at you and goes, "Do you know?" Back in my day, mercenaries used to have a bit of class about them, and sort of goes down you to know, the side. Back in my day, <laughs> servants knew how to speak to their betters. And at this Tink point, is twitching he at this point. Stands up. He knows that he's higher class. He stands this. up from behind this desk, and he is a big man. Like behind this desk, he was hiding his full physique, and he stands up. And as he stands up, there's like an audible crack as he breaks, sort of like, he moves his shoulder back. And he looks up and you sort of see his whole face. He's weathered, he's got this short grey hair, and sort of a few scars on his face, on the side that was sort of away from you. His face is clean shaven, his eyes are dark blue, and you sort of notice that his nose is ever so slightly wonky. Clearly it's been broken once or twice. And he just sort of raises up and on his hip, is this beautiful ornate pistol and he just sort of like rests his hand on it ever so slightly he says I think you should watch your tongue right, especially Mac if you want to... to get paid 
Mac okay. is going to take the scepter and just gently push the crown up a little bit on his forehead and just say, do you see what I have on my head? And he sort of looks at you and goes, yes, you're wearing a cushion on your head. Um, and he sort of goes over onto the side and he so while he's doing that, he starts kind of sort of like flicking through this Max. Maybe you should uh, talk to him like that. Might be an idea. Might not be a good idea with that pistol of his. So Tink kind of stiffens uh, up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <coughs> All right, Max's going to look That's very Max, confused at this. Pertinent. I have said <laughs> that you should not be so rude to us. And he sort of flicks through, and, and like at this moment, this this guy sort of just like ignores. And he, he sort of goes, picks up this book, and goes, "Yes, that that is the brooch. Uh, well, would you like to collect payment now?" Well, given that we've brought it to you, and that was the agreement, yeah, I think payment would be a good idea. Very well. And he sort of reaches over, and he sort of gets this little pouch out onto the front, and uh, sort of sits there, nice and hefty, with with some weight. And he goes, 50 silver pieces, all yours. Um, um, Tink, are you selling my brooch? Well, yeah, that was why we came here, right? I like my brooch. So Tink is going to step back and kind of stand behind. He's going to put Mac between him and this guy behind the desk. And he's just going to stiffen up back into his normal kind of personality. Mac, we, we need to sell this this brooch. I, I believe you may have to say goodbye to it. However, I'm sure we could find you an alternative brooch somewhere else in Marquis. Right before we get the train. Why do we need to sell this brooch? Well, to get on the train. Gillis, Gillis sneaks in and is like, Mac, think about what we can do with the money. We can actually, rather than just see the train, we can buy a ticket for you for the train. <laughs> How long have you been working on that? <laughs> about a week Mac takes off the brooch slaps it down on the and, on and the Tinkle counter kind of like revert back to his common form and, and step out from behind Mac here you are then 50 silver 50 yeah. silver uh, well, thank you thank you very much indeed Mr Smith will be glad so, to see this I'm Mr. sure Mr Smith about, is he? puts it over to the side has he got any other work Uh oh. Oh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Smith, uh, he'll probably collect it in a few days. They, somebody seems to come like every couple of days to check if anything has arrived for Mr. Smith, and well, now they'll be happy that they've got something. In fact, <coughs> that that gentleman was in here a couple of days ago. He'll probably be around later. Um, any jobs? Yes, we have jobs. Uh, they're up on on the wall, just on the side. You'll be able to see them there. What? Right. Okay. Whilst people are distracted and talking. Maybe not at this exact oh, moment. No. Mac <laughs> is just going to try and steal the brooch back. Yeah, so coming. at this moment, as soon as as soon as Tink puts the the brooch onto the side, he sort of takes it and puts it into this little uh, bit on the side, just under his desk, and he sort of sits back down on his desk and goes back to writing. Um, clearly, there's this little bo- lock box just to the the side of him, um, and he sort of sits there and goes back to writing. And as you sort of like stood there, can I help you, good orc? Oh, no. Are you going to make me do this really <laughs> obviously? Uh, I don't think <laughs> it's a good idea. <laughs> you, you seem rather troubled there, good orc. Are you okay? Um, um, is this a bar? Is this a bar? Are there drinks about? Uh, no, this uh, is this is a mercenary establishment, good sir. Uh, there's some water and over in the pail on the side. Ah, uh, Tantan would pop up then and be like, eh, "Eh, I'll have a spiced <laughs> beer, please." <laughs> and at this moment, he just looks looks over at you and goes, "I don't have any spiced beer." Okay, whilst he's saying that, <laughs> Mac is just going for this. Okay, so so. Um, make, make a... Oh, Lord. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Make a stealth check. Go oh for it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hang on. Before before Mac does that, uh, Gillis goes over to said pail of water, splashes the oil off his face, just blasts his nostrils into the pail, 
Uh. Oh. Didn't get my wash this morning, thanks. Hoping to outrage the uh, old fellow into distracting him for Mac. It's just, he's just there. So, so at this moment, so, so Mac sort of like trying to. Ooh. Okay, that was good. So that was six. That was six six five and plus on on what? Stealth. Which is stealth. 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 Is stealth dex? Agility. Stealth under. Yeah, dexterity. Ooh, okay, so that is um, uh, 17. That's 22. Stealth, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was that stealth as well? Yeah. Plus, I've got I've got a focus in stealth, so that is 24 okay. in stealth. Oh my okay. god! You actually steal the old man. <laughs> so, yeah. um, Can he steal so, the old yeah, man? And that was a double six. So let's, I've let's also got a five. Way. I set the DC of that at nigh impossible, which is 21. <laughs> um, and you've beaten it. So, um, at this this moment, when whereby like, you know, he's sort of like slightly distracted by the snort. Mac, with like in a blink of an eye, just reaches over and goes like almost instinctively knows where it is. Just reaches over the counter, and his hand just returns. And cl- clasped in your hand, Mac is the brooch. Good. He's very subtly going to turn around and just wander back to his friends. Surprising he just put it back on. Yeah. And as, 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 as this is all going on, uh, the, the man just goes, if you want the jobs, they're on the side. Please sign up for them. Let me know. Uh, but anyway, and he sort of sits back down and sort of goes back to writing in his book. All right, we shall have a peruse. Come on, lads, let's have a look. What we got? Uh, uh, so, uh, over on the side, there is like this little area with these sort of bits of paper whacked up on, um, and you see there's there's a few. Um, there's one that says uh, "Mercenaries wanted, protection and help. People missing, Beastkin, Montecresco." Okay, and, and those of you who live in the area know that Monte Cresco is to the west of Marquis, near the uh, border with the, um, the forest, um, far to the west. Um, there's another one that says, Bodyguards! Required to protect Mage Alus Froil as he investigates recent Skyrock impact. Good pay! And then there's another one that just says, it's slightly smaller, and just says, Unsolved murder in Portside. Guard believe it's suicide, but I don't. Seeking people to help. Hmm. And Tink kind of straight and he's out of earshot of this dude. He's, he's kind of straightening back up into his more posh form. Do any of these interest you, gentlemen? And Mac? Go, go, gadget <laughs> posh. Um, I am happy to do whatever, but I think we should probably leave here quite quickly for no reason at all. Hmm. And like, I think Tink will suddenly notice the brooch is pinned back on. <laughs> yes, perhaps we should. <laughs> Fine. Let's, let's, let's take, memory. Let's take all of them. Yeah, the he would remember them. Let's yeah, just take them all. Have they got like little tear off <laughs> yeah. caps, or are they like? Uh, just so there, there, there are there are contact completely. there are contact details. Some of them, um, however, with mercenary contracts, the way that they are normally given is you sign up for them. Um, okay. So you basically take them on, um, and it sort of gets logged and, and various other pieces. Obviously, when you're cashing them in, you cashed one in because you had the document mm. that was for the brooch. So that's how you were able to cash it in. So basically, it's like almost you get given a contract. Gentlemen, why don't you wait outside and I shall sign us up for all three of these. Yeah. Okay. Uh, should we sign up for okay. three or should we choose, choose one? Well, I mean, do we lose any money if we sign up for all three and don't do them? We'll lose reputation if we don't. Yeah, so if you, <laughs> do if we you, have if a you... reputation? Normally, normally, <laughs> normally with regards... Yeah, with the guys who steal the stuff we drop off. <laughs> normally with regards to mercenary contracts, they tend to only hmm. supply one at a time per location. Ah. Um, because obviously, if you were to do one and take one, so that Portland, will have a time stamp on it for or... the other ones, so... Not to game the system, but could, could we come in as individuals? But let's not. Let's... If you wanted to, theoretically, yes, you could. 
So, um, but I let's guess, not. Let's go for let's one. Not, yeah. I guess what Galen. We are we talking in hushed tones at this point? I guess. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Galen will kind of close his eyes and just say, "Lord, Lord of Flame, gu- guide us. Which contract should we take? <laughs> Which one should I set? Okay. Uh, you can't open. start a fire. Okay, roll, roll a d6. Oh, just a d6. Five. Five. D3. Okay. Isn't it? We know what, how Adam what? is. And you, and you point at one of them, and your la- your finger lands on the people missing due to the Beastkin raids in Monte Cresco. This one. Is there a we'll count there? Gillis doing similar. Praise to Great God Rook. He uh, uses his uh, thumbnail that's razor sharp to pinch his finger, and he just flakes blood at the uh, <laughs> at the board, uh, hoping to divine which one to go for. Okay. Roll a d6. One second, it's got delete. How uncouth. <laughs> it is a three. It is a three. Okay. It's so also as a you, Cresco one. Yeah, as you, as you <laughs> flick them across. Rook has okay. a slightly different guidance. Uh, he thinks you should uh, go and investigate the recent Skyrock impact. Mm. Uh, Max is going to lean in and just say, I really think we should go quite quickly. Mac, how about you wait outside while we finish up here? Okay. And so Gillis is saying, well, my name is Gillis Skyrake, and there's a Sky Rock. So, yeah, it's too coincidental for me. And obviously... Coincidental? You point at that one. Don't you like things that come from the ground? This thing came from the sky. But it's made of rock. <laughs> rock sounds like rock, right? World. Oh. Well, I think Must we should go for this one. Preordained. Tan Tan, like which decided. one should we go for? <laughs> um, you can't even tell where Tan Tan's looking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at all three simultaneously. <laughs> um, points 90 degrees in the other direction. Point. Have, on, I... <laughs> um, have I ever heard of Beastkin and what sort of... Uh, uh, damage so, they might cause, or yeah. So you know that beeskin, beeskin are things that you know people of your, you know, mercenaries. You're with some strong people; they could probably handle beeskin. Um, you know, it's a local heavy metal band. Yeah, you, you actually you've you've heard of um, you know you you recognise the name Alice Froyle. He's a bit of a twat. <laughs> well, <laughs> I've heard the name Alice Froyle before. He's a bit of a knobhead. Is that all you've written in your character description, Jonathan? For that guy, I love that. <laughs> it's, just, it's just Alice Froyle, a bit of twat in the description. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how tall is he? Going for the Pretty wattish. Well, what about Pretty the well. murder? That sounds interesting. Well, given that the murder's already happened, we could always come back for that later once we've done this one. <laughs> Sound advice. Okay. Very well. I shall. I shall sign us up for this one. He kind of rips the note off the wall and, and goes okay. back into his common form and struts back over to the other guy. And he sort of looks up and goes, oh, you're "Signing up for a contract? Yes. Uh, I think, pass it over." I think this one will uh, suit us right down to the ground. Very well. He sort of <laughs> takes it off you and looks at it. Uh-huh. Very well. Yes. This been there for a couple of uh, about a week or so now. Reaches out so, so. and sort of, yeah, yeah. Uh, not very popular, yes, are well, you? We haven't had, no, yeah, well, we haven't had many mercenaries come through recently. It's been a bit of a quiet winter. I mean, most people tend to hunker down in whichever city they're in, and they just don't fair weather many adventure about at the moment. And you sort of stop fair weather adventure, yeah, eh? No, it, it really isn't. It really isn't. Um, anyway, here, here you go. Um, I just need one thing before I finish the contract. Uh, who am I assigning this to? Uh, and Tink, like, all of a sudden, he's like, <laughs> he's basically like, he doesn't know what to. Uh, g- g- Gillis, Gillis, Skyrank. Okay, he's just right. Yeah, that's me. Is, is that, is that, uh, because cause the way these contracts work, good sir, I'm sure you know, considering you just handed one in, is, um, I need to write down everybody who's involved in the contract just for future purposes. Uh, do you have well, a name, is... a group name, or anything? Yeah, we're, um,. Um, Wild stallions. <laughs> it's KFC. The Mitchells. <laughs> you can't have wild stallions. That's my other group. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, we are. What's what's our name, lads? 
Oh, we're What's outside. our name, lads? And he sort of starts <laughs> writing down. <laughs> What's our name, lads? Yeah. Uh, What's our name, lads? That's uh, that's very good. Um, anyway, and he sort of passes the bit of paper back to you. And on this bit of paper, you see there's this document that sort of has the contract, and it gives you a contact. Uh, for the contract as well, um, which is in in Monte Cresco, it just says it says uh, head of the guard Monte Cresco, um, written out, and um, yeah, you you now have a contract. And uh, at this point, Tink will actually pick up the fifty silver that he forgot to pick up earlier, pocket it, and just and, and take the note and be like, a "Pleasure doing business with you. Pleasure doing business with you. Uh, come back if you ever need anything." And sort of sits there and sort of starts jotting cushy, and then he'll just kind of straight. He'll, he'll sort of turn around and just walk out, follow the others out, I guess. Um, so as you sort of make your way back outside, sort of the the hustle and bustle of the town has really started to pick up. There's people moving to and from the market, um, and and the the guild itself is not far from the central market. Um, where are you going to go? Uh, Gillis is going to sort of hang off Matt's coattails. There's probably the most people he's ever seen in one place at one time. So he's feeling a bit anxious. Uh, so I guess Galen... very and, inconspicuous. Galen will turn to Mac and be like, so we can either go see what your staff says or we can check out the train. Uh, I think the train. Um, just out of curiosity, did we sign up for anything yeah, inside? Yes, we did. And he... I think uh, Tink 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 signed up for something. Okay, uh, that's good. Let's go see the train. Who the hell are what? I'm, what's our name? Uh, uh, ne- never mind. Is that a I boy think, band? I think you misheard me. Let's, let, let's 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 not worry about that for now. Come along. Let, let's follow me. Let's go to the train. Okay. So as you sort of start making your way uh, towards the train, it takes you back towards the central market. As you're sort of making your way towards the central market, you get approached by uh, this uh, this teenage boy. He just goes, hey, mate, all right, all right, all right. Would you like to see what I've got on show? And he sort of l- looks out in front of you and holds out his little coat pocket. In um, front no, of it is okay. <laughs> we do not want to see uh, that. Thank come you. on, good sir. You want to see what I've got on <laughs> show, don't you? Don't you? It's right here. Look at all of this. This point, Galen be like, you can't speak to a king like that. And like push oh, him away. Oh, you're king, are you, good sir? Good sir, king, yeah. Mm, well, well, well. Lovely. I do see you've got some great stuff on your head there. So, would you like to see some of my my other things? And he sort of pulls out the other side of his coat. Goes, look at all of these. There's a couple of brushes hanging off his, off his coat. Uh, come on, come on. You you wanna? Wait a second. That that brush. That brush looks a lot like the brush you've got, Tan. Um, no, this this one is mine. It's very specific, handcrafted from Bolivian oak wood, I believe. No, I think <laughs> I think it looks pretty similar to the the brush that he's got over there. Okay, so at this moment that you're deep in conversation with this, um, you notice that uh, there's a couple of individuals near you. Um, you also notice at this point. Um, let's go for Tan Tan. Yeah. You notice there is a young boy <laughs> with his hand in your oh, pocket. God. And I hope not. at the at the point you sort of look down and you see he, he makes eye contact with you and he brings his hand out with a couple of it's copper pieces. Tan Tan to make eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> he brings his hand out with a couple of copper pieces in. And at this moment, you just see the person who's been holding your attention. Ah, good says, time to go. And he legs it. And at the moment that you sort of all take this moment, you realise that um, Mac, a teenage girl, was in your bag. Your bag now lies open. And as you glance out into the crowd in front of you, you see her running she away did. with a book. Right, he's getting his crossbow the fuck out. Uh, her book. And he's shooting <laughs> Can I, that uh... is where we are going to pause for a quick break as these oh, teenagers are running out into the crowd. When you say a teenage girl was in his bag, 
I was wondering if he's been carrying her this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so with the intermission comes a quick announcement. So we managed to hit 500 followers on Twitter recently. And to celebrate, we're giving you the chance to win $10 to spend on Green Ronin's store. Head over to our socials on both Twitter and Instagram to find out how to enter. Not only that, but a second awesome thing coming your way, we've managed to source 15% off any Green Ronin publishing as long as you use uh, the code that is shared on our Twitter and Instagram. Again, head on over there, check them out, and you'll be able to get that code for a sweet little discount. Anyway, back to the show. The scene, as you see it right now, there are four... Uh, young uh, sort of teenagers sort of all running away from you into the central marketplace um, you sort of have a quick cautionary glance at them you see a couple of them have got um, bags of money in their hands and you sort of put your hands to your hips tink that bag of 50 silver pieces is gone um, oh my. Mac the, the book from your bag has gone um, Tantan two copper pieces from your pocket <laughs> have gone. My um, money! <laughs> and then you see the, the fourth one in the coat just legging it into uh, the, the marketplace itself. Uh, th- this is a chase. Okay, Stop so them. this works slightly differently from, from some different things. So I know just before uh, we embarked on the break that um, Max said he was pulling out his crossbow. <laughs> um <laughs> So, what I would like everybody to do, okay, is um, as part of this, it, it works as actions, okay, so you have an action each round, okay, rounds sort of um, are done on, on initiative, so it's like combat, okay, um, but the actions that you can do are slightly different, okay, so what you can do is as follows, every time, okay, a, uh, a round comes round, you make a run action, a chase action, Okay, it's a special action. You roll a uh, 3d6, and if you are successful, i.e. you beat the difficulty of the test, your stunt die gets added to a total. Okay, and you have a running total. Okay. Um, if you are within 10 of another person, you can shoot them at long range. If you're within 5, you can shoot them as if it was short range. If you're within 2 you can go for them as if it was close combat. Okay, so at the current moment, okay, they've legged it from you. I'll tell you how far away they are from you. Uh, So one of them is quite close to you. Uh, Another is a little bit further away. Um, The one with the book has properly legged it away. And yes, as has... Uh, the one with the 50 copper pieces in it as well. Mm. Silver? 50 silver? Come on. Uh, sil- silver pieces, sorry. Sorry. Sure um, so, it? Yeah. Yeah. So, it so gold, in front of you, it? so. It's gold, wasn't it? Luke? Sorry? <laughs> yeah, platinum. it was. Yeah, it was yeah. Platinum. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely platinum. 100? Um, so, uh, every, every sort of one of these begins with a chase test, okay? So, at this moment, um, if you want, you can run after them. Or you can do another action, as you have uh, stated. Um, so what would you like to do? We'll start with Mac. All right. Uh, he's, if they're in range, he's shooting them. <laughs> okay. Which, which one are you shooting? Preferably the one with the book. But okay. if they are way, way out of sight, he'll take the okay. one that's running nearest. So the one, the one with the book okay, is uh, still short range, still within distance of short range, just about to, to run into the, the crowd themselves. Yep, he's shooting them. Oh, oh God, don't child. miss. <laughs> don't miss. Either oh, way. double four and a two. Either way, it's horrible. Either a bystander gets Not hit. against a kid. Uh, Eleven. Eleven. Or a kid gets Eleven. hit. Eleven. But you get double four, so if it hits, it's a stunt. Okay, Ooh. eleven hits. Ooh. This is a child. <laughs> Just pin uh, one yeah, kid to another kid. I bet bonus. it's a dwarf or a halfling. I bet, uh, or like a gnome or something rather than a child. Um... If Dwarf it's a, child. A child halfling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason why I haven't seen any dwarves. <laughs> They're endangered as well. Right, my crossbow is. 2D- it's oh, a dwarf, sorry, get him! Six, sorry. What's your stunt, Rob? Okay. okay, so that's 5 plus 
one plus one, so that's five, six, seven points of damage with the crossbow, and I got four stunt points with it. Yep. I'll do the other D6. Another D6? You gotta go shoot yeah, a kid, just do him quick. <laughs> <laughs> Another five points of damage. Oh my god. So, um... <laughs> Oh, and if if they have their dexterity is less than mine, <laughs> and my dexterity is three. Yep. Another D six. Lower than yours. This kid's gonna. This kid's gonna evaporate. In half. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. This bolt flies out towards the child carrying the book, smacks them square in the back, and they sort of like keep running for a few steps, and then just drop on their face. <laughs> Uh, take, Are we the baddies? With <laughs> 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 that bit in Call of um, Duty, no Russian. Um, we did just murder a child, so yes. Hmm. Tink, you're up. Uh, so with this run, I'm just going to run coming after. right for us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, t- Tink is in. Uh, Tink is in etiquette mode at the moment. Uh, are you adding anything mode. to this chase? One of test? Com- one of his, uh, um, so you just um, are you just running after? Yes. Them? So if you just stop at this thief. moment, um, I would just like you to make it's just going to be a flat uh, constitution uh, is what you would add to it, which is running one. Then, okay. Oh, I've got stamina though, if that helps. No, not stamina okay. just yet. Which uh, which one are you chasing after, Tink? Uh, the one who stole they're my money. They're sort of running as a group. Oh, they're oh, running okay. as a group. Not oh, okay, right, they're not splitting up. Right. Uh, so five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. Stunt okay, that's passed. What's your what's your stunt? Three. Three. Okay. Cool. Uh, good, Gillis. You're up next. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna pat down the one that Max shot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Loot the uh, body. So it will take you. It will take you a turn to run to them. Okay. So I'll do the test anyway to see if I get there. Or okay. Uh, well, uh, if you're if you're because actually you're going after the one that's not running away. <laughs> Um, yeah. It would disengage you from the chase, but you'd be able okay. to go up to the child. Okay, okay, yeah. So you go up to the child and you sort of like, you pat them down. Uh, their face is flat in the mud. Okay, so just roll them over. Okay. Um, as you try and roll them over, there's a crossbow bolt in their back that makes it a little bit difficult to roll them over. Just pick them up by the bolt. <laughs> Get out. Um, so you, you sort of hold the bolt, it's wedged into their, their back. God. Okay. Uh, so are they dead? Dead. Um, they've they've recently been shot by a bolt into their spine. Um, their eyes are sort of like rolled back into their head. Um, they're they're not very alive. No. Well, this took a turn. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just gonna just uh, stand up and say uh, nothing to see here. <laughs> and sort of this moment, there's a, there's a few people like looking over at the child, and you see sort of a few people with their hands over their mouths. Um, and we'll move on to uh, Galen. So, who was saying something about our reputation in the town? <laughs> well, luckily Tink's in a bit of a disguise at the moment, so nobody recognises yeah. that the, oh, well, okay. the finest tailor in all of the Oron Coast has just been like a s- accessory to a murder of a child. <laughs> Galen, what are you going to do? On the bright um, side, there's so some clothes in town with holes in them. <laughs> I'm going to make make chase and try and catch up with the person that. Tink is chasing okay. as well. Roll a running check, so constitution. Uh, nine. Nine, okay. So as you, you go to run after them, um, sort of at the moment things are clear. So you can sort of like just run after them, but you can see to see the crowd starting to gaggle around a little bit. And in fact, because of the commotion caused by the shot body, there's actually sort of like you see a clear path. So you do manage to succeed. Um, what is the your number on the stunt dice? One. Okay, cool. Uh, Tan, what are you going to do? Are any of them within ten feet of me? Oh, ten yards. Uh, sorry. Yeah, so there is one of them within. In fact, the one that took the two copper pieces out of your pocket is uh, in in range of you. That young rib skellion. Uh, I'm <laughs> gonna ca- uh, I'm gonna cast a uh, jolt on him. Okay, if that's possible. Here we go. Watch, okay. this, watch this not hit him. Here comes whoa, the game. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's just wait for the dice roll, okay? No, this is definitely going to kill him and a few people around him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to get run out of town here? Okay. 
It's a 12, which a 12. succeeds. Okay, you succeed. Uh, did you hear that, guys? Did you hear that? <laughs> Go on then, it's and no, your Jolt. It's doing something. <laughs> so, Jolt does two penetration damage, and they have to do, uh, what is it, stamina? They must succeed uh, a stamina test versus my spell power. So what was your spell power? Uh, 14. I've rolled a stamina test. Uh, I've rolled a 13. Yes! <laughs> so they are stunned for a turn. <laughs> okay, they are stunned. Yeah, okay. that's so right. Happy. 10 10's done something. <laughs> okay. Electrocuted a child is fine. He, he was actually yeah, aiming for someone in the crowd. Okay. <laughs> what are you guys doing? You've literally killed two children in the No, he's stunned okay. quite no, he's stunned. 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 You've stunned him. He's just licked a battery, that's all he's done. <laughs> licked a battery and then Rob's like shot one in the back with a crossbow bolt and now Jay's parading him around like a bloody trophy. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Nothing to <laughs> Like a kebab. <laughs> holding him up like a kebab. Uh, wow, well, <laughs> our reputation in this like town has suddenly taken a... <laughs> okay. So back onto the kids who are who are running. Uh, so Faster now. First one doesn't <laughs> succeed. Well, one of yeah. them isn't. Yeah. <laughs> well, two of them aren't. Sorry. Fifty no, percent reduction in running children one of them at the moment. Won't run again. <laughs> okay. Cool. So, um, so two of them are continuing to to run in, and the, the one that stuns sort of just like taking a moment and is, is sort of stunned for. Oh, and sort of trying to shake things off because they can't do anything at all this this go um, so they're sort of just in front of Tantan who's, who's jolted them with this electricity uh, so Mac over to you uh, Mac will walk over and recover his book <laughs> ok Walks, you walk over <laughs> and you, you, you go to recover the book um, and sort of as, as you do so you sort of have this person come across to you and goes you shoot them Yes. Why did you shoot them? He stole my book. And you sort of see a couple of people. You don't. Uh, you, uh, and you sort of like see this person is like completely gobsmacked and just like. And and this other person sort of walks across and goes, "Well, you do know most of the pickpockets in the city are orphans." <laughs> Um, and from that moment, we'll move on to uh, Tink. Well, no one's going to miss oh. him then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no witnesses. Oh god. Over to yep. Tink. Uh, I'm going to keep running. I've got to chase this guy down. He's got my money. Okay. Go for it. Oh, go go yeah. gadget Ooh, legs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got roller skates built in there. Uh, rocket yeah, okay. Cock, 13. Go, go, cock me swagger. 13, okay, <laughs> so that's a pass. So if you start to try and meander your way past the crowd, okay, mm -hmm. um, that's 13. And that actually, so as you're running after these two, it brings you, um, what's on your stunt dice? Five. Five. Wonderful. Is that a T-1000 okay, so running through you, this crowd? You are very much, <laughs> you're like, Turn you're his very hands much the in, in reach of dun, these dun, two. Dun, dun, so dun, dun, there's dun. these two, yeah. two kids that are running from you, and you're, you're within reach of them. Um... Gillis, you're you're still at the body. Um, this person's come across and has sort of said about the orphans. What would you like to do? Um, I'm just gonna totally blag it and say he's still alive, and just pick this kid up like Kevin Costner in the bodyguard, okay. and just Slap leg his it. arm around. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, roll, roll a uh, weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> Get a string on uh, yeah. it. Oh, 13 with two fives and a three. Okay. Okay, good. So, as people almost like, you see a couple of people go <gasps> and sort of exhale as you pick them up and you sort of run run off in, in the general direction. You do hear somebody say, uh, I think there's a medic over on the, the right. You might be able to see somebody there. As you sort of like start running off on, on into the distance. Yeah. Uh, Galen, over to you. Yeah, I'm just going to carry on chasing with uh, Tink. I was, I, I, okay. I was heading that direction. Running after Tink. Okay, so the crowd's starting to come in a little bit. So, yep, yeah, roll, roll, a, roll a chasing test. A run test. Eleven. Eleven. Okay, that's pass. What's on your stunt die? Four. Four. Okay, so you two are within range of, of the kids as well. Uh, Tan, over to you. What would you like to do? Well, I was really hoping that someone would have just walked up to the electrocuted kid and just grabbed hold of him, but okay. seeing as no one's done that, <laughs> I'm going to elect to shock him again. He's going to piss himself. Okay, he's still stunned. He's still stunned, <laughs> but yeah. I will attempt to jolt him again. 
for okay. a second stunned round. Okay. Uh, how about roll these dice? You've stopped his heart. <laughs> uh, that is an 11, which I think is still a pass? Yeah, that's yes, I target think number. It's 11, yes, just okay, passes. So it's got to make a test. Yep. Oh. No, he's failed. Yes. Uh, takes another two damage and is still stunned. Yes. Just there. Excellent. Okay. Um, cool. So on to the kid. So one is going to try and get away from you, Ting. Uh, but as he tries to do so, he gets knocked and, and, and almost like just knocks over to the side and bumps into somebody and sort of like staggers and loses his feet. And you can sort of see that in your next go, you probably reach out and grab him if you wanted. Uh, the other one that's also running um, there, who's the one with the coat on. Um, succeeds and manages. Oh, he's legging it. Um, you reckon you could probably still get this, but as you sort of like see the one that stumbled, you see the other one in the brown coat tint just running sort of past you. You've got a choice to make. Which one might you go for? Okay. Um, Mac, uh, you're at the body. We'll come. Uh, well, at, Gillis has just run off with the body, <laughs> and you're there with a crowd of people just staring <laughs> you down, looking at you. Uh, I take it I got my book back before he ran away. You've got your book, yeah. Okay, good. Um, are any of the other people running away in range? No, they are not. They are long gone. <laughs> long it, just mortar it, it in, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. And then uh, coolly Mac walk is, away. <laughs> yeah, Mac is just going to put his, his crossbow back and find somewhere to wait for everyone else to <laughs> come back to him. Okay. All right. Um... Uh, so, Gillis, you're running around the corner with the body. I'll assume it will come back to that in a moment. So, Galen, uh, you are within reach of uh, one of the uh, kids in front of you who's who knocked into somebody. Um, and he's sort of staggering in front, and you see Tink just in front of you as you're sort of making your way through the crowd. Um, there's another one. It's a little bit out of your range, and the brown coach is legging it past Tink just further over to your right. What would you like to do? So the one that's closer, he's the one with the 50 gold, uh, fifty silver? Uh, yes. Um, so I'm going to, as I'm, I've still got the momentum with me, I'm just going to run towards him and try and like spear him like Goldberg. Okay. So Jesus. I would like you to make an opposed wow. strength test, please. Will he beat a child in a strength test? <laughs> 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 no you see him try to start a fire? <laughs> well, strength or dexterity, really, it should be, because you're trying to grab them. But strength or dexterity you can use, I don't mind. Uh, 14 with a double 5 on the stun. Yeah, you, you, you spear tackle this kid. You <laughs> knock them down to the ground. You've got them in your grasp. Uh, they are no longer uh, able to run away. <laughs> no longer able to walk um, or yeah. breathe. Um, I just realised I missed out Tink. Tink, it's yeah, your yeah, go. No uh, so, so, uh, He's going to shout, stop thief, and continue to yep. run after, I guess, the one that's carried on. He's within your grasp if you want to try and grab him. Well, the one in the coat. Yeah, oh, the one in the Then, yes, please. Go for it. Uh, what am I rolling this on? Strength. Uh, so, you can do a strength or dexterity. Uh, it will just be a, a roll off. It's one or one, basically. So. Oh, no. Triple two. So, that's Triple seven. Two. Okay. He manages to, as you sort of reach out to grab him, he, he, he zooms off. <laughs> uh, oh, blimey, does he zoom off? Uh, Slippery little fella. Yep. In fact, at that moment, he manages to disappear off into the crowd and sort of as you gather your feet up, you look around, you can't see him anywhere. Okay. He didn't have anything, um, else, did he? We don't know. So, he was um, the guy in the coat. He was the guy in the coat, yeah. With all the brushes. So, Galen, you have this child, you've you, you wrapped them around. Oh, actually, no, there's still one left. There's the stunned one. Sorry. There's the stunned one who's still stunned. Yep. Tan Tan, because you're up next. What yep. would you like to do with the stunned one who's uh, still stunned? Can I, like, run over to them? Yep, you run over to them. Uh, you just get to them. Uh, I will. I assume they're, like, either, like, jittery or frozen in place. Yeah, they're um, sort of, like, they're, they're sort of, like, still stuck in place, and their hand is clasped. Holding on tight to the the two copper pieces that they stole from me. <laughs> can, can I can I see if they have a coin purse? Um, not, they don't. Not a They're euphemism. wearing rags. Okay, I will. Whoa! <laughs> what is this? Not a euphemism. No, I said not. Not, not a euphemism. <laughs> uh, I am going to uh, very deftly take the two coins back and be like, "That'll teach you never steal from an old man." So you sort of take a moment, you sort of like 
stretch the hand out to try and like get through the stunned clench of the, the fist and you sort of get take the two and you sort of like you sort of see the eyes just judder ever so slightly and, and sort of at this moment they sort of pause they look at you and go sorry sir sorry sorry where's where's my sister oh, no. uh, ran off into the crowd that way <laughs> and he just starts running off into the crowd I, I, I really hope that the one with the crossbow <laughs> in, the, in the back is my sister <laughs> Well, we d- yeah, we didn't specify uh, whether that was a boy or a girl, oh, so uh, fingers crossed. I just hope it was a <laughs> goblin in disguise or something. It wasn't actually a kid. Like the new low so, group. <laughs> um, the child murder. So at this moment, <laughs> this moment, uh, Galen, catchy. you've got this. So so uh, the chaos moment sort of uh, siding. There's a few crowds of like people pausing around in the market, seeing this little ruckus that's going on. Galen, you're there, holding on to this um, one culprit, uh, who's sort of like almost shaking, um, sort of just out of fear of, of being caught. Um, Gillis, you're there with this limp body, uh, with a, a crossbow bolt in its in its back. Mac, you're just stood over to one side, and you sort of see Gillis um, just go round the corner. Um, Galen, what would you like to do with the individual that you've got? Rough him up a bit. I'm not going to rough him up. He's a child, <laughs> like he's an orphan. He's so, a thief. Like, okay, so does he look chest. visibly like shaken and scared? Does he look like he's got fear? Yeah, like, he he, he is visibly him? shaken and scared, and you you swear like whilst you're holding, um, you almost feel like there's this slightly warm patch oh, appearing on your okay. arm. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, okay. Um, it's the heat gonna, pad you I, put on there. At earlier. this point, I'm just going to hold him up. I'm going to take the gold off and be like, "Be gone with you!" and like push him off. And he sort of like push he, him off, drops down, and just to... runs off. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, 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 and then obviously, like, like uh, so the the person that the gay and sort of uh, ushers off is a is a, a small. Uh, he was a, a small built boy. Ah. Um, he sort of had a little bit of scrag on his on his face. <laughs> it's fifty fifty um, now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so at this point, I'll probably just head on towards towards Tink because I was going to say, am I continuing to chase? Door. Right. Uh, well, they've gone. They've gone completely. You, don't know where okay. you look up and you look around. You can't see. No them. way of finding, like finding out, like hunting them down or. Uh, you sort of at, at this moment you, you sort of spend a few moments like looking round, and you just can't spot them anywhere. They seem to have like melded into the crowd. Hmm. And that was the the young guy that had the. That was the on. guy that held you up, yeah. So uh, uh, Max just killed this uh, kid's sister. What an inconvenience! <laughs> Does he still have the brushes? It's okay. I got the book back. Hmm. So, a few moments pass and you sort of gather yourselves and a couple of you notice Mac over to one side um, and you make your way over over to, to Mac. Um, Gillis, uh, you're just off in a, in a small alleyway on the side. Yeah. Um, just around the corner. dead child. Uh, what are you going to do? Um, it's not what so it looks like, he says, as we, <laughs> yeah, as we enter the alley. <laughs> can, I, can anyone see me? Um... I'd say from where you've like legged it in the way in which you legged it, no? Um, I'm going to have to try and recover Mac's crossbow because it's sort of basically the only <laughs> evidence, really. <laughs> Pull the bolt out. The bolt. <laughs> uh, yes, and I don't have very many left. Well, I imagine thinking. it's barbed, <laughs> so the only way I'm going to get it out is to really just push it through. Okay. So, um, so you, you, you spend a bit of time, you recover the crossbow bolt. Okay, I mean, it's unfortunate what's happened, but... Um, Fuck me, this is dark. Yeah, I'm just... <laughs> John, maybe yeah, don't introduce yeah, any children. There are no children in this it. universe. Remember how there was that unsolved murder? Well, there'll be another <laughs> case when all of them go back. Yeah, hide, hide, hide the body, Jay. <laughs> no one cares about urchins. Yeah, I'm just going to have to... Is, is there anything nearby I can cover the body with? Um... As you sort of like look around and say, there's a few sort of uh, crates and rags and things just to, to the side, hidden away in the alleyway. Okay, so um, run out of town. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to um, put it under your cloak. Yeah, just do my best to hide the body. 
Uh, roll a. Uh, let's go for a. Uh, Hide body test. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's go Corp for secretion. I. Let's go for a intelligence check. Or you could okay. do a dexterity check. Either or. You could do a stealth check or an intelligence check. I got. I'll go for intelligence. That's my best. That gets me a total of 12. So thank you, way around us. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I was okay. going to disfigure them so they couldn't identify the body, but I thought that was a bit dark. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So you, you sort of put the body over to one side. Okay. Uh, you make your way back out the corner and you see your companion stood over. Uh, just a, a little gaggle around Mac. What would you like to do? Um, uh, before I left, I noticed... did oh. mutter a prayer to Rook to say, like, okay. oh. Well, that it's makes unfortunate. it all better. <laughs> that um, makes it but all better. <laughs> I pray to Lord Rook that no one finds you until we've left town. Um, <laughs> Not like sleep well, little one, or no. something touching, no. No, I'm pretty sure that's don't what Michael Jackson discovered. said, and I don't think that would <laughs> <laughs> The Ballad of Jackson. <laughs> yeah, the, ba the Ballad of Mr. Jefferson. <laughs> Um, would there be any chance that I would have seen the child gravely injured Die. where I was? Uh, yes, because it was like the first thing that happened. Um, would I have seen where he went with the body? No, because you were too busy with the... Uh, you, you see him re-emerge from this alleyway as he sort of makes his way back towards you. Um, I'm going to sort of make my way over to him and be like, uh, did, the, did the young one make it or uh, not? Um, hiding the crossbow bolt behind my back, um, I say to Tantan, like, you would not believe it. He was wearing some kind of metal plate. It just sort of knocked him for six. He just got up and legged it. Well, he slapped me in the face. I was trying to help him. So a trail of blood like drops behind you, leading back <laughs> to the alleyway from this crossbow bolt. Uh, so kid kid was wearing I... quite um, hefty uh, clothes. It just absorbed most of it. Would I believe him? <laughs> Let's try. Uh, it's an opposed let's test. Let's say roll roll an opposed test. So, uh, Gillis, roll a uh, communications deception. Okay. And Tan, Tan, roll a perception check. Got 13, 6, 3, 4. I got a 17. Lord. You do not believe him at six, all. 6, 6, 3. Whoa. Yep. You do um, not believe him at all. Would the could I go into the alleyway behind him? Yep, you go into the alleyway behind him. And would I see the body there? Oh God. Uh, roll a searching check. Uh, what's that under perception again? Uh, perception, yeah. Well, you know you were talking about derailing kind of this. <laughs> That's a sixteen. <laughs> yep. Uh, so you sort of like look around. You see, there's a little um, there's a little bit of canvas, just that looks like it's been a little bit moved. And you sort of walk over to it. You pull it. Aside, and you see um, underneath uh, a girl, uh, blonde hair, um, little dirty face uh, on her side. Um, yeah, not not very filled with life. Okay, um, Tantan's going to sort of quite delicately like move the tarp out of the way and move the hair out of her face. And, right, it's got um, really dark really quickly. Yeah, he's gonna. Will his <laughs> healing magic work? Because he does have a uh, revival. Okay. Oh please. Uh, Seriously so, wounded or fallen, dying character immediately adjacent. Okay, so that's. Uh, let's say it's been relatively quick so far. Um, I would say, have a go. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna need twenty-eight. If there's any <laughs> time, no, no. I need, I need, I need uh, fourteen, and I rolled fourteen, and I add two to it, so it's a sixteen. Hey. Sixteen. Okay. So as you sort of like bring your hands over, like the the put the, the individual. This has probably only been about a minute or so. Yeah. Um and. You sort of spend a little bit of time, you know, you almost have a moment as you're casting this magic, you have a moment of tan tan clarity. <laughs> that childlike state leaves you and you become focused. Your sort of geriatric motions with your hands become fluid and elven like as you start to sort of knit and weave your hands across. Um, 
it sort of brings back some of your older, more ancient power in that moment. You were, and have had various instances through your life, but you were once an incredibly powerful mage. And it's almost like in this moment you managed to conjure up some of that magic. And you sit there and you knit across. And you spend your time, and the rest of you, you notice that Tantan is, is gone for a, a few moments. And as you're working, Tantan, there's this... <gasps> and this slight shudder. Uh, what? Uh, and this head just sort of like looks round at you, sort of wipes their eyes slightly and goes... What? Where? Uh, uh, who? What? Where are you? Huh? Who am uh, I? Huh? Uh, you you were running down the alleyway and you tripped, little one. I uh, just uh, gave you some water and brought you back around again. <laughs> Where's my brother? Where's my uh, brother? I think I saw him run out into the the main area to get help. He's uh, dead. We killed him. Uh, Covered in piss. <laughs> uh, uh, you should be able to find him if you go out onto the street and take a right, and you carry on looking that way. You should be able to find him. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And she sort of like wipes her eyes and her face and just runs out of the alleyway. Um, Is Max here running out of the alleyway? Sorry, <laughs> oh, no. Can I just come just take a <laughs> breather? Thank God we've not killed a child. <laughs> yeah. um, well, no, we still did. In the city. <laughs> moral. Who thought uh, live to die another day. Of the group. I feel a sense of relief. So I go up to uh, Tan Tan <laughs> and I say, look, I told you she was okay. Uh, yes, yes, perfectly fine, yes. <clears throat> and he's just going to like make his way back towards the rest of the group. Okay. You make your way back towards the group um, and you sort of get back and um, you're, you're sort of, you know, take a moment and, you know, sort of like, there's a weird sense of, you have a, a strange sense of deja vu returning to this group of people you don't really know where you've been for the last few minutes it's like it's almost like it fades from your mind ever so slightly and you get that fuzzy foggy feeling of and you sort of shake it off and um you, you're you're there as, as the group just sort of just off to the side of the central marketplace um a little bit of commotion has, has built up but people start to dissipate off uh, back into the crowd and sort of a few people shrugging their shoulders and you see there's some people talking what would you like to do? Is it a so magical got... alleyway? <laughs> no, you're sort of just off to one side at the moment. Just go to Mac and say, Mac, we need to talk. <laughs> it's okay, I got the book back. <laughs> yes, but if you think about it, Mac, if you start shooting at people who steal the books, or anything really, you could hit the thing that got stolen. So you probably shouldn't do it anymore. I am quite a good shot. Apparently, <laughs> they hit such a small target. You had to give it some lead. <laughs> uh, Tink comes back like he's sort of. You, you can tell from his mannerisms that he's a bit dejected. The one in the coat got away. I was unable did to catch you him. Get, did you get your money bag back? And he turns to Galen at this point. Here, take the take the money, Tink. Just Thank you. Lovely, lovely I got money. my copper pieces back. <laughs> oh, well done, uh, Tanta. You uh, got thank those you. <laughs> and I uh, flick this crossbow bolt and uh, <laughs> give it. A, hey, Mac, uh, did you drop this? Oh, thank you. I do not have many of them. That is very helpful. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a bit of brain matter or something on it. Like I, I, yeah, I think at this point we fluid. may have drawn a bit too much attention to ourselves, gentlemen. Let let us leave this place. Maybe regroup somewhere else. At the train Didn't station. Didn't want to see this train, Mac. <laughs> yes, I would like to see the train. Let's lie low for a while. And go to the station, <laughs> the only station <laughs> in the city, <laughs> the real busiest place in the city. No oh, harm, no foul. Yes, Mac. Tink. Yes. Uh, have you seen this? And uh, you know how, how how your eyes come out and you can see better. Mm -hmm. And Mac gets his binoculars out and puts them in front of his eyes, and then he puts them in front of Tink's eyes. Oh my! Tink can see into the atmosphere. Just 
And he, he kind of he kind of takes them off of, of Mac. Hmm, yes. Binocular vision. Interesting. Thank I can you. see for miles. Yes, yes, it appears you can. But I With couldn't the see the these. train. Where is the train? Yes, we let's let's maybe take some of the back roads. Uh, I, I fear we, as some of the others have said, we may have attracted a little bit more attention than is perhaps desirable. So I think Tink, giving his knowledge of the city, would probably lead them on a bit of a circuitous route, like okay. maybe a, down a few like side alleys and quieter kind of areas off the main thoroughfares, just so that. Okay, so rather than sort of taking the main road straight towards the the city entrance exit on the uh, on the west sorry uh, yeah on the west side of the city you sort of meander around and you sort of take them through a couple of other districts you know you sort of just take them around you know you see the old pub house here and sort of people milling around their daily business and you sort of meander your way back to the the western gate of marquee and this this gate is sort of it's 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 large it's got a, a golden um sort of tops to these two little watchtowers um and there's sort of a, a wide open gate with a, a couple of guards um stood at the front um these guards are marquees marquee guardsmen um they've got rifles on their backs and they've got blue capes um, and they're just sort of like watching people as they're going through. They're sort of just not, you know, they're, they're, they're looking at, at the people. There's this little bit of uh, sort of thoroughfare of, of individuals. And you see the odd person with um, uh, somebody holding an umbrella for them walking past. You see there's sort of this air of uh, nobility around for some strange reason. Um, and as you get close to the gate, you sort of look out and you sort of see why. Um, out in front of you, there is this sort of large building, just sort of on 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 the, uh, the on your left, um, and in front of it, there is this giant metal beast. It's made of multiple parts. It's got large metal wheels, rather like the kind of things you see on wood carts, but made of what you make swords and armor out of. There's large rods and things that are going hiss and making noises. At the front, there's this sort of plough-like thing, just sat over the, the front of this metallic thing. And it's got tubes coming out the top, one of them just slowly sort of expunging a little bit of steam. And, and behind it, you see there's these carriages of wood and metal. Um, and sort of just milling around this, you see there's people at the front. Um, there's somebody posing on the side of this vehicle um, with, with somebody else painting them. And there's a few other people just sat round the front of this vehicle, just painting away. Um, otherwise, you sort of see there's there's a little hut as well near this large building. And, and by this hut, there's a, a couple of people just sort of exchanging little bags of, of gold and money. Um, and here's where you see one of these people holding up an umbrella. Um, and around this vehicle, you see there's a large number of, of guards with rifles on their backs and pistols on their their hips uh, with sort of these elegant rapiers and in fact you also see uh, something you've not seen before and certainly not in these parts not for a while you see this individual in beautiful golden armor he's holding a large halberd of sorts but his armor is almost like slightly blinding to look at he has this beautiful red cloak just hanging down by his shoulder, uh, down off his shoulders, and he's sort of sat just on one of the the, the front uh, the carriages, just on the steps leading up to it. To his side, there's two individuals wearing leather armor with these beautiful golden plates, again with these red capes off their side. These two that are wearing light armors have these sort of antique rifles in their hands. Um, these are some of the finest guards in the whole of the Aurum coast. These are the personal guard of uh, the coin master, who is the leader of um, sort of the events in, in the Gold Coast. He has a, a force, a personal force, uh, known as the Bedetsky. Okay, and they are his sort of his personal army. So they're not. They're, they're all his bodyguards. It's not. That doesn't necessarily mean where they are. He is, um, but they are the people that are sent to deal with the big problems in the Orem Coast, or to guard the more important things. And those of you who know about Marquis and know about the train, it is sort of one of the 
the linking things that brings the Aurum coast into like modern civilization and the one thing that brings it on par with its super powerful neighbors the empire and you just get this general general sense that everybody in the area is quite astonished by this vehicle it's probably only come through here a few times and when it does it's not here for very long so people come and see it it's almost like a bit of an attraction even for the locals who, li who live here are there how many carriages are attached to it is it just carriages or is there like um, it's, there's sort of a, a mix there's ones made of wood and glass with bits that it looks like you could see out of there's others that are just completely wooden uh, but those ones seem to be all kept at one end just a little bit further away okay. behold gentlemen this is a train where, where does it go to is amazing and Tink will explain to Tam Tam in great detail about the exact <laughs> route of this railway and like how how long it took to build how many how many sleepers how many rivets how many nails it took to construct both the train <laughs> and the rail he's uh, probably going to take fairly decent notes on it in his little book that he has because, uh, <laughs> he's never experienced anything like this before cool this, this is going to take him about there... 10 minutes yeah, to, to explain whilst Tink and Tantan are talking um uh, Mac is going to have a look about and <laughs> can he wander up towards the cab? Can he get in there? Uh, so at the, at, the, at the cab um, there's there's Mac two uh, as you make your way to the, the front train there's a couple of people at the front they're painting it uh, sorry paint like they're, they're artists painting the, the image in front of them and there's this person posing at the front um, at the actual cab themselves um, there's two um, sort of uh, marquee guards with their rifles just stood on the side and you can sort of see in the cab there's an individual just seems to be tending to a few things um, just behind you there is uh, there's those people in that golden armour um, but yes yeah, so you sort of approach they sort of look at you and go ever seen a train before? I have not, it is amazing yeah pretty nice aren't they pretty nice nice hat you got thank you I am I am King Mac. Uh, who am I addressing? Uh, I'm Tobias. Hello, Tobias. It is a nice day, isn't it, Tobias? It's, it's a lovely day. Good day to you shoot are... kids. <laughs> <laughs> Wipes some bitter off his, oh. off his chest. <laughs> Just bringing the tone down. We just about <laughs> got over that, and then we were like, "No, you are going back yeah. into the dirt and the muck and the." I'm just disturbed ways. at how just jovial Mac is. <laughs> what a sociopath! Yeah, it wasn't like they were orc children he killed. <laughs> <laughs> it could have just been anyway. Sorry. His eyes. Yeah, we're all gnomes to him. Um, yeah. So, so when we get to Mac, Mac's just happily chatting. Do you get? Do you work here all the time? Uh, well, I work. I work for the guards, uh, and this is my assignment today. You are so lucky. Do you go? Do you ever get to go on the train? I have not been on the train, good sir. No, I have not been on the good train. It costs far too much money for a guardsman like me. I can't afford a ticket on this thing. No, that it, that is very sad. How much? Do you know how much the tickets are? What? Oh yeah, a ticket to to Goldcrest. It'll put you back ten gold. Ten gold. We're not I getting a return to the map. Is that ten gold? Uh, you sir have a tenth of what you need. Well, not even that. Two tenths of what you need. Hmm. That is that is very sad. So Galen are leaning to uh, Mac at the moment and, and go. I think you may be able to offer this guy some money to have a look inside the train even if you don't travel on it and then we steal it <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. how do you drive uh, this thing Mac is going to take his the bag of group silver and oh, he's no. going to he's going to give it to this guard <laughs> and he's going to say can I have a look at the train please and he sort of he looks There's at this 23 this, silver in the bag at the moment is he looks at this is this this yeah, bag of silver right. oh, and, and he sort of like holds it and he goes 
the train's here. Just look at it if you want. And he sort of tosses it back to you. Okay, thank you. And Matt's going to go and step up onto... And, the... and as you go to step up on it, he goes, no, 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 you can look at it. Oh, can I not... How do I... I, I... I want to get on on the train. Oh, well, that will cost you ten gold pieces and you go where the carriage is set, certainly for somebody with headwear just like you. Oh, okay. Um... Is, is everyone here human? Uh, the majority of people are human. Uh, there are some other races around. Uh, um, so there's sort of various uh, people of elven and, and, and sort of elven uh, ancestry. Um, other thing, uh, you see the odd half-orc about, but they're not very, not sort of in the nobility sort of attire, but you see the odd one uh, walking about. But the majority of people are human, yes. Meh. Okay, all right. Mac is disappointedly going to stalk back to everyone else and say, um, we need lots of gold. I do not have enough. And that's why they call it a railway, Tanta. Sorry, Mac. Do repeat that. Um, we need lots of gold to go on, and I do not have enough. How much did they say it was? Hmm. More than I have. Okay, Tink's going to mull this picture. over. Tink, Tink has a lot of money stashed away. Like, what is it? In the shop. What is it? 20 so. silver, maybe? 10 gold. It was 10 gold. Could, could mm, Tink Gilly, have been carrying enough Gilly's of his own profits? can't even contemplate that level of money. Could, uh, could, no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't tend to carry that amount on no. you. Not, not, not from your shop. You would have left ATMs shops. haven't been invented yet, have they? No. Okay. So how fast did you say it went again? Well, it's a combination I... of speed and weight, or weight and power in the engine, and how much coal is shoveled into the steam combustion chamber. And that's how they power it. Interesting. This would carry on jotting stuff. Yeah, the, the TIG just goes off on another one about like how steam engines work, etc. <laughs> Galen and Gillis, as you're sort of just like observing this area, could you just make a uh, perception check, please? Perception. More children. <laughs> I do have Two. perception. Children or snipers. I've got a focus in seeing. I've got a whole movie about it. The uh, yeah, yeah, you can use that focus. I got 16, okay. 14. 14, okay, cool. Alright, carry on. Oh dear. Always a good sign when the DM makes you roll for something and then doesn't tell yeah. you what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I guess at this point, Galen's just concerned with what we've done over the last hour as a group, but maybe like this <laughs> loitering around the train, maybe not the best idea. So he's going to suggest to Mac, uh, he's going to turn to Mac and just say, So, this is the train, we've seen it now, shall we head off? Yeah, if we start doing some of we these mercenary could, jobs, we, we could, could get, get the money to get you on. The train. How do you suggest we get on the train, Mac? We don't have enough money. Come on. <laughs> well, <laughs> fight our way on. <laughs> I don't know how much he's worth, but Jeremy is a very good sheep. You cannot say you are not you selling Jeremy. I'll tell you that right <gasps> now. We've what? been through so much After with Jeremy. Everything you've it's been not through, on. Mac, you cannot get rid of Jeremy. However, no, you are right. I, I tell you what. I, this this train. That the roof of the carriage looks quite comfy, and I have seen you toss the wizard before. <laughs> <laughs> it was dark. Have to toss uh, me. Oh dear! Not again. It was dark. Thought no one would see. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Mac is going to have a look about how many people are watching them at the moment. Uh, the the only people that are watching you because you're beside the the carriage uh, near the front at the moment the people that are watching you there's a couple of guards up by the locomotive there's also the three uh, golden adorned people who are sort of just sat at the carriage nearby okay Galen if you make a little distraction I think I can get I can get the wizard up and <laughs> we'll just have to see how we go okay, and then so I can throw him onto just the, gonna onto wander the, over the, to the guards and be like so Tell me about this train. <laughs> and they like look at you 
and one of them just looks at you and just goes, fuck off. Just sort of like goes back to his conversation. <laughs> Have you heard about a lord and saviour, the ember lord? Mac is going to try and boy. Oh no. Tap, tap on the roof of a train. Not this again. Well, if anything, though, oh, if then. we get on this train, John opposed, can literally railroad opposed, us. Opposed, opposed, Jack? Can I, opposed? Instead of try, can I, instead of trying to oppose him, can I try and jolt him? Yeah, go for it if you want. Because he's sick and tired of being picked up and thrown places <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, go for it. So, so yeah, so he, he, will, he will try and grab you. PVP. I'm going to say that if you, if you succeed in your jolt, then he'll be stunned. Uh, I got a 13, which is a success. Okay, so, uh, Mac, you need to make a constitution check. Is it constitution, yes? Yeah, it's constitution. Uh, stamina check, if that helps. Stamina? Oh, I've got, I've got advantage in stamina. I totally destroyed you. I don't know if you can see, (laughs) but I've got... Oh... Oh, I can't see what that bottom one five, is. Five, five, three, three. plus oh. plus one in stamina. Oh. Plus, I have stamina as well. Oh. So it's two. So, so you, you only take beat it. me by two, but you do take two points of piercing damage, uh, penetrating damage. Yeah, two two points of damage. Okay, so uh, roll a strength check, please, Mac. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> I'm just gonna be like, no, no, not again. <laughs> ah! It's what's happened All is right, the jolt has really locked his muscles out, and he's just that. fired you even that harder. Was eleven. Okay, uh, so as you sort of like try and pick up this wizard, you, you throw him in the air. As you throw him in the air, um, you sort of see with like almost what you feel like is unnatural speed. You have two rifles pointing in your direction. Um, and the man who, and, and Galen, you're just greeted by the fact that these two people that stood in front of you and just told you to fuck off. Like, almost in an instant just flip round bring these rifles up to bear and point up as this elf sort of just flies up hits into the side of the carriage and sort of just flops down on the side take uh, two points of uh, take uh, two points of damage uh, for that damage you flap and um, the the man just sort of stands up and goes what the fuck are you doing um, the person said that it was 10 gold to go in the train, so we are going to go on the roof, so we do not have to pay your 10 gold. <laughs> and this, this this man just looks at you, oh, this holds this, this halberd onto the side, and just goes, get out of our sight before we shoot you. <laughs> Can we have our friend back? That is not very polite. We are guests in your city. Yeah, this isn't my city. My city is Goldcrest. If you don't bugger off from this train... I'll deal with you the gold crest way. <laughs> Make your friends wherever we go. <laughs> <laughs> Mac loves people. People love Mac. King Mac. Okay. Best shot in the West. <laughs> so I think at, the, at this point, Galen's realised like the error of his judgement and he thought he'd be having a little bit of a joke with, with Mac, but it's probably gone too far. So he's going to be like... He's going to say to the guys, wait, wait, wait I'll, I'll deal with these two. And just turn to Mac and be like, come on, <clears> let, <throat> let's see if we can find a way onto this train another way. Uh, Tink no, is... Go. Sorry, Sorry go on. No, go on. No, I can't make. Tink's going to use his eidetic memory. Galen, did you not have to travel to the Archaeological Society? Well, we did need to visit them um, and, and find out more about King Max Stark. Well, then perhaps maybe the we book. should do that. Yeah, so I get between the guards and Mac and I'm like, sorry about my friend here, he's obviously very special. He, uh, thinks I am, he... I am very special. <laughs> I put my hand to one side, I'm like, he, he thinks he's a king of sheep. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to get him out of your way. Like, Mac, let's go, um, Galen's got an idea. You sort of like you're, you're greeted with sort of silences there, and you sort of as you make your way and sort of start moving away, they just sort of settle back down and sort of like you know almost with a, a slight bit of uh, you know slight sort of recognition of their skill, you sort of and you look over with a little bit of jealousy. Certainly, you think who's pretty good at quick reloading your your gun from your wrist, but you sort of like as you're walking away, you see these people and they sort of like 
rotate these rifles round and just holster them back onto their, their backs. Um, you know, with with a real sort of efficiency and speed that's quite unnerving. Oh, that's very impressive for an organic being. Um, what route we are you taking? Them. What what route <laughs> are you going back to the, um, the the archaeological society? Are you going on a roundabout route again, or more direct? Uh, probably so more direct, direct, but like along sort of site. You know, not in any kind of populous areas, just in case we are kind of wanted. Okay. All right. I don't know why. I mean, okay. so well, we as you're kill making your way, blood. <laughs> as you're making your way, nearly um, back through the um, sort of districts, you sort of take a few turns and you sort of make your way through um, a little bit off the beaten path. Um, you sort of wander ever so slightly into the more southern part of the, the city. As you're making your way through uh, one particular main street of a moment hits you and you see a group of guards and sort of, you sort of take a, a route off to the side that you that feel you know quite well to. So you're making your way down this alleyway and you just have a slightly unnerving feeling. Um, Tink, as you're leading the way, I would like you to make a perception check. Okay, is this on any particular focus? Uh, I, I would say... Yeah, you could use hearing. Ooh, I'm adding plus five to this. That's good. Ten, thirteen, eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. So, so as you're walking along here, you hear that's them. And at this moment, uh, as you're walking through this slightly more narrower path in this alleyway, out of the the sides just launch about four people towards you they took you completely by surprise everybody else who was walking through here and they have you dead to rights oh god um tink however heard them so the way i'm gonna play this i'm gonna get you to do i'm gonna roll some attacks let's see how well i can roll can today. i communicate to the okay. others to at the moment you heard that's them uh, okay. this is when this happened right. okay um, however unfortunately earlier the perception checks that you made earlier you did not pass you were being followed and have been being followed for a little while um, ever since so. the marketplace where we well the wouldn't you like to know <laughs> so it all adds up yeah <laughs> uh, uh, so it like there's a logical path yeah <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Always that you can't so, get away with shooting um, kids in the street. Matt, um, <laughs> Almost. So the way this works with Dead to Rights, because they brought you completely untoward, oh, no. if they hit you at all and deal any damage to you, you are knocked out. Okay? Yeah. Or killed. Okay, that's oh, how God. Dead to Rights work. They because basically you've just been walking around the city, you're just taking you you're not really looking out for them. They've been looking out for you very much. Oh, okay. God. They've caught you very unawares. Um, so, Mac, you've been hit. Okay. And your world goes black. Uh, do, do, do. Gillis, uh, that is a... Do, 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 12 to hit. Defence, Gillis. Defence, Gillis. Oh, my defence is 11. Your world also goes black. Tan Tan. Can, can I see what uh, they're being hit with here? Uh, you'll see in one moment. Okay. Uh, 40, uh, sorry, 16. No, I have an AC of 50,000, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think you'll find that misses. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, I've literally seen it going. Your world <laughs> goes black. Um, Galen, that is a 13. I've been hit. Your world no. goes black. Tink, as you hear behind you this scuffle of fists hitting onto the back of people's heads, planks smacking into their back, you turn round and you're greeted by this scene of these four large bandits just jumping out of the sides of the, the alleyway, laying into your friends, and your friends or your acquaintances just dropping down slightly unconscious. Uh, behind you, you sort of see, um, sorry, at this moment behind you, you hear a 
Yeah, it was them. That's the one. And he sort of looks and goes, and that's the staff. And as you turn round, behind you, there is this large brute of a man. Big ginger beard. Big tattered head. And his fist just smacks into your face. Knocks you ever so slightly. And knocks you out cold as well. Mugged by Hagar the Horrible. (laughs) (laughs) Your world sort of go black for the next few moments. You, a couple of you days in and out of consciousness. As soon as you feel like you wake up, something hits you out of nowhere and sort of turns you back to the darkness. And you sort of like feel everything, sort of like time warps. You don't know how long you've been like this. And then you sort of find yourself sat on sand. Sand under your feet. And sort of you start to brush your eyes and you try and reach up but you realise your hands are bound the light in here it's dim flickering and you sort of look up the light hurting your eyes and you just sort of see in front of you this man long brown beard sort of very neatly cut short black hair held over to one side and you see him there holding the staff looking through it and he looks over it and he looks over the child that's there throws him a bag of coins and goes huh you've done well and he turns to you and goes So tell me, where did you find this? And that is where we will stop this episode. Always kill the children. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my lord. That was... That was... So... That went... I was like, where's this going? Okay, cool. (laughs) The orphan pickpockets are getting shot. Nice. (laughs) Yeah, I did not expect that. Just Matt to be like, so yeah. I'm going to pull my crossbow and shoot the child. Just well, in all well. fairness, he did do one of his rounds of a ridiculous amount of damage. Yeah, yeah that was quite so, a lot. <laughs> you know. It's like, Almost I mean, like he's built his character to have that dexterity difference. <laughs> if a child's running yeah. in the opposite direction to a crossbow bolt that's flying through the air, e- the air even if it hits them in the back, um, it's still going to knock them down. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was, that was brutal. But yeah, so I, I was waiting was, for a uh, GM hammer to be like, oh, your crossbow string snapped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no, you right. you strike a bystander. It's, it's, it's <laughs> no, the, the GM the GM hammer has has now hit you. You you brought something. The else child in the back of in the spine. So that's that's <laughs> yeah. got a slightly uh, no slightly Russian. different way from where I was expecting it to go. But you know. I'm hoping the small child shows up and saves us. I reckon well, that was the one that gave us, the, got given the coins. It's probably the one that we shot. <laughs> yeah, if you, just let him, if you just let him die, we'd have been fine. <laughs> hey, Tantan has no recollection of this. He has no idea what you're on about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like so, the um, that that sort of wraps up uh, this this uh, Fortnite's episode. So thank you very much for listening through that, and uh, yeah, we will find out what awaits the group. Uh, within wherever they might be right now and, and where this is all going to go. Uh, Are we on the train? Um, Please say we're on the train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah no you're, you're on the carriage, situation. on the train. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll see how they, whether they manage to get themselves out of this situation um, and how. So yeah, I look forward to, to that one next time. So thank you very much, folks. Amazing. Yeah, thank, thank you, John. You. Yep. Cheers. Cheers. All right, John. All right. Uh, how, and uh, thank you very much for, for listening along and we will catch you in the next episode bye 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 cheers thank you for listening to our show we hope you enjoy it as much as we do on that topic if you did like the show please leave us a review to help more people find their way to us anyway we look forward to having you along for the next part of the journey and just remember the most important question what would you like to do <laughs> <laughs>